What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and here we are to talk about the Game Awards 2023. Look, I got to be real. I streamed for almost five hours. My voice, actually, I feel fine. My throat feels pretty good. I think my eyes. My eyes are getting a little tired. So I want to go through what I thought of this year's show and what I would call, based off the thumbnail, based off the title, it is easily the most uneven show that Jeff Keighley has, I think, maybe ever done, period. Um, I'm kind of just looking at it from the Game Awards. Actually, on my third channel, Podcast podcast now back to the past. I'm glad I did this. I looked back at every year's Game Awards. So I went back to the nine past years, looked at the new announcements, uh, like games that were not revealed yet, looked at the updates, and looked at who won certain things. And it was good that I did that because I kind of have those things fresh in my mind. And I got to be real. It's why I would say that this was not the worst, okay? I know that, you know, we just watched it, so, like, the opinions are kind of, like, fresh in our minds, right? We want to either say it was mixed or maybe, oh, actually, I've seen a lot of people say how terrible it was. I think when you look back, and if you do honestly look back at the past years, th this started slow. Like, the game where it started extremely slow and it only started to pick up, in my opinion, around 2018, 2019 is when especially the reveal started to get much better. Before then, oh, it was very uneven, and the big parts of it were not even all that big. You could argue this year was kind of the same. The biggest things of this year kind of hinged upon your tastes. So, like, ending the show on Monster Hunter is a choice. I'm not a big Monster Hunter guy. I get it. I get many people are. My chat definitely didn't seem like they were, and, and that's fine. But that very much, that almost entirely summed up the show to me because it's like, it is a big game, and if you honestly take some steps back, right, you really critically look at it, it is a big game. It's a game that's going to be played by millions, maybe even tens of millions. Monster Hunter is a very big franchise that's actually just gotten bigger as the years have progressed, okay? So it is a big game, but it just, to me, it was underwhelming. It's like, oh, this is it? Like, even Elden Ring DLC would have been big, but I don't know if that would have been the showstopper, you know, ending that the show needed, and that kind of just encapsulates the entire show, right? What I am say in the title and what I've even said on Twitter and stuff, look, for as many highs as there were in the show, and there were some, and we're going to talk about it, there were so many lows. The show, I think, was balanced, like, completely, right? For every Budokai Tenkaichi 4 that we actually freaking got, which is nuts, and I... I had predicted that a while ago, and then I kind of dropped it, and I never talked about it, but like, okay, there's that. That's awesome. But then you get like 30 mobile ads. You get your three Game Pass ads. You get Starfield as an ad. Not picking on Xbox. There were so many terrible ads throughout the entire... And there was not even just terrible ads. There were just so many ads. It really was a lot of mobile games, but just for every big thing, there was also disappointment where it's like, okay... Some of these games all look the same. <laughs> like, they look the same as other. There was clearly the theme. Like, Jeff loves his anime, and trust me, I love those kind of games too. Like, Persona's my jam, and I, I really like it, but there was just so many games that kind of look similar. There was a space vibe early on, which is funny because he's been criticized before for, like, the space theme where he'll show, like, eight games that are all in space. So he didn't really... What I think is he didn't really learn from his past mistakes. Another thing that I... Maybe it's me getting older. Maybe it's me watching all of these shows so freaking much. And obviously, you know, we co-stream all of them on the channel. You know, I have to, like, hyper-analyze. And the more you watch it, I think the more you do it. I, I really am fed up. I'm done with the lack of gameplay. And, and again, maybe that's, like, an age thing. When I'm younger and when I watch this, you know, as a teenager and stuff, it's like, yeah, you know, they're fun. Like, they're huge, big cinematic things. Okay, cool. But in reality, older me now looks at it and says, it's hard to get too hyped without fully seeing it. There was only a few games that got me excited, super excited, without showing almost anything. And I'm thinking of Jurassic Park and then Hideo Kojima's Overdose, which is just OD, right? Those two games, for different reasons got me with what they showed or I guess who's presenting it in the case of Hideo Kojima the rat and I mean and those are special cases right but that's the thing like a lot of these things that they showed even the Dead by Daylight game from Supermassive that game might be awesome it also might be absolutely terrible you can't how can I judge it if I only see a cinematic and 90% of the games were cinematic. Uh, some of the biggest ones, even the one from former Rockstar employees, which the cinematics, yeah, that looked incredible. 
and it's being made by over 200 people. That studio is 200 plus people. That is that's a that's a triple A studio. That's a triple A game, right? That's a game to watch over the next like four or five years before it comes out. But how can I judge it when you show me a cinema? And I get it. Like this is what they always do. But like Jeff talks about wanting to learn. He talks about wanting to improve. This absolutely was not an improvement from last year. This wasn't even improving from Gamescom or Summer Game Fest. The ads are getting too much. They always were. They're getting worse. They're getting more in your face. They're all mobile. They're all, I don't know, just the way the show is structured. And I think even though he announced so many games, I think that was a pro and a con, right? Because I feel like there was maybe more announcements in this show than ever before. You'd have to, like, check it, count it, right? And I'm sure some pe- somebody out there will count it probably by tomorrow. But the the con of that is, yeah, there's all these announcements, but you're going to get some stinker. You're going to get some games that don't hit or are for specific people. I don't want to come off, like, ignorant in the sense that, like I said for Monster Hunter, I get people's tastes are not my own, right? Like, I have tastes, you have tastes. I understand that. And when you think about 100 million people watching this every year, they're not all like me, right? A game I might not be into, they may like. It's why I'm trying to nitpick or just criticize generally specific things that are maybe not personal taste. Monster Hunter is a personal taste, right? What wins game of the year? What wins the awards? That's more of a personal taste. Look, I am a diehard Alan Wake fan, right? I was rooting for Alan Wake the whole night and it won a lot and I never expected to win game of the year. So Baldur's Gate, you deserved it. But like the Spider-Man thing, right? Uh, Losing seven, I think all seven. Yuri, I think was burned, right? I think Yuri did deserve that. But you know, as I've said, the awards, they mean something to them. It was cool for me to see Alan Wake win. And I actually mentioned this in past videos. The reason I wanted Alan Wake to win so much is simply to maybe drive sales. Maybe. Maybe it doesn't even work. But hopefully somebody sees this and says, oh, that was a weird musical number. Oh, it won six awards? Well, maybe I'll check the game out. At the end of the day, awards don't mean anything. They they mean as much as you want it to mean. So if you think whoever won best audio design, if you think that's important, it's important. If you don't think it's important, it's not, right? And I personally think it's not. It's for the industry. It's not for us. I mean, that's literally what it is. So I'm not I'm not super bummed. In fact, I'll be honest, the Yuri thing, yeah, that, that was, I think, a mistake. I think he should have won. I actually think the game award part was maybe the best it's ever been. I kind of felt the games deserved it. A couple here and there, not everyone, but most of them, Even if I didn't agree, even if I wanted Alan Wake to sweep, I kind of understood. I respected, you know, the decision. Because, again, at the end of the day, I don't care. I don't care who wins best uh, innovation and accessibility. What do I care about? Right? So, I mean, you could take that the wrong way. Maybe some of you did. But, no, I hope the point's getting through. You don't have to care about who wins the award. So that part's negligible. That part, I'm not even, you know, it's not even part of it. I think, you know, again, to me, the biggest misstep there was a couple, but one of the biggest ones is even some of the biggest games shown. I couldn't get that excited because you didn't show me the most important part, which is the game. In fact, let me take it a step further, and let me take a huge jab here at Hello Games of No Man's Sky, and now this Light the Fire or whatever it's called. I don't really care, and I'll tell you why. This is a team that's had a redemption story. No Man's Sky is a redemption story as well, just like Cyberpunk, but let me tell you something. I have kind of a problem with redemption stories in the sense that if you have a redemption story, that means you royally screwed up, you effed up at some point in your game. And what No Man's Sky did, I think is almost criminal in terms of misleading, outright lying, outright showing in trailers thing in gameplay, things that were not in the game till years later. And I have a big problem with that, and I've always had a problem with it. So while the new game making a simulated earth looks cool. I don't trust a single goddamn thing in that gameplay. Even the gameplay part, I don't trust any of it. It needs to come out. It needs to actually be that. If it's not, they're liars again. So, and that's maybe a hot take. I really don't think it is. These people, including Sean, you know, the head of it, 
He's literally lied, okay? They've lied to us for years back in the day. And Jeff even showed it. Like, hey, remember when we announced No Man's Sky? Oh, yeah, when you lied to everybody and misled? Yeah, okay, let's get excited for their next game in which you say the same thing. Jeff saying, oh, it's great to see an indie team push and I can't wait to see the next 10 years because this gives me hope. You said that for No Man's Sky. They're, they're liars. So... You know, you could say, well, Alex, they've rebounded. They're better. I don't trust them. I don't trust them until this game is out and it does its stuff. So, again, mix. Like, for every Budokai game or there was a couple under the radar, like even Alan Wake dropping New Game Plus, the God of War DLC, uh, you know, Jurassic Park. You can go on. I mean, there were probably 10 to 12, maybe even more, pretty good things. Like, you're missing the Tomb Raider. Like, you might be wondering, well, Alex, why aren't you mentioning the stuff that wasn't there? That's tough, right? Because that's like, hey, Jeff could have asked. Uh, it, I, I doubt it would have been pitched to him and he rejected it. But at the end of the day, it's really just what's available to him. If they weren't ready to show Tomb Raider, which, by the way, they did say they were going to show it in 2023. So that turned out to not happen. But, you know, the Tomb Raiders of the world, the Stellar Blades, for me, I, I was hoping that Stellar Blade could get something. These games that are on our wish list, you know, you could complain, and I get it, because ultimate, but it is subjective. It's what you want to see versus what somebody else, somebody else might not care about Stellar Blade, but you and me do, right? Like, I'm a, I'm a big pusher. I'm one of the only people to talk about Stellar Blade on YouTube. So what's important to us might not be important to somebody else. And again, what I thought was not great at the show, or even great, could be the opposite to other people. But I don't know. I uh, I thought it was like a 5 out of 10 show. That's what I said on Twitter. Like Hideo seeing that and just kind of getting pumped up by him and Jordan Peele. Like I think that game's going to be real special. And again, there are games here and there that I think the middle of the show is actually really good. And let me just shout out Herald of Freaking Darkness, Sam Lake, Matthew, Ilka, all of them freaking there performing that song live. That nearly saved the show, and if you ended there, I think I would have given it a higher score. Um, that was perfect. It, like, I'm going to take a second. That was everything I wanted to see from that song, from that game. I even predicted it on my bingo board that Sam Lake would dance to Herald of Darkness. Not only did I get that right, but I got the entire freaking thing right. So absolutely nailed that. And that shows me, by the way, that Jeff is kind of plugged in. And that's why I get actually so mad at him and so mad at these kind of decisions. Jeff, I do believe, is plugged in to the gaming industry and like us, the fans. But then he makes these weird choices of selling out in a lot of ways to advertisers and all. I mean, yes, you need ads to like make the show. But just the way it's handled, and it continues to get worse, I literally think it's getting worse every year. Like, how, what are you supposed to say? You know, like, I'm trying to not call him a sellout, but what am I supposed to say? I think he's talented. I know. I think he knows what he's doing, and he has a vision, and it just gets so clouded. Um, and again, when you make a show as big as this, there were just so many things that, like the counterbalance, right? For every okay thing or good thing, there was something that was like, you know, why are we doing this? Or this looks like a repeat of a game you just showed 10 minutes ago. Some of the ads, like Skull and Bones, got its official release date, but it was an ad. Like, I, you're, people don't even pay attention to the, the ads, right? Normally, like for me in the streams, I turn the volume off and we talk. We kind of like recap what we just watched. You're not paying attention. Skull and Bones is, is like outlined or shown to us as an ad and it just gives the release date and it's like well, well why is that an ad right so it's the way it was handled there were a couple ads that should have been like actual major announcements and then other way around some of the announcements of it like i don't know like a warframe thing like do you need to do that again personal taste but just you try to nitpick you know one kind of example there i don't know i don't know and then uh, we could just keep talking about it but at the end of the day it was definitely a weak show. It was one of his weaker shows, um, Game Awards, I think, that he's ever done. I don't think it was the weakest, got to be honest. And some of the Spike shows were terrible, <laughs> so just throw that out there. I used to watch it back when it was on Spike, so it's not his worst. It's, it definitely isn't. Um, but was it the most uneven? Yeah, because it just it had so much bad, and then it had these glimmers of, like, you know, like, Herald of Darkness is, like, the greatest thing they showed the entire time. Uh, Hideo, like, coming out on stage and walking through the freaking door, like, that was epic, right? I don't know. Sam Lake, some of his speeches were awesome. Not to keep bringing up Alan Wake, but at times they did really good. Twisted Metal 2, season 2, I should say, not that the second game. Um, you know, there were some good moments, but there was also some terrible ones as well. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure, as always, you're subscribed to the channel, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.